our first plant and plant list seven is Astilbe x erandesii. Common name is Astilbe. And that is in the family Asteraceae. It has a light preference of full sun to partial sun and a soil preference of moist, well-drained soils. Astilbe x erandesii has a flower and a panicle. And this panicle has very tiny flowers coming off of it, and it can range from red to white and blooms in July. The foliage of Estelbe x erandesii is very similar to fern. It has serrated edges um, and is also opposite arranged. But most of these leaves are formed in a basal formation with two to three compound leaves. Estelbe x erandesii uh, can grow to a height of one to one and a half feet and a spread of about one foot. The maintenance with Estelbe x erandesii is very low and this is an herbaceous perennial. Next we have Autherium nipponicum pictum, common name Japanese painted fern. This is in the family of wood siassi. It has a light preference of partial shade to full shade and a soil preference of moist, well-drained soils. The foliage is very colorful. It's arranged in alternate leaf arrangement. This is a very slow spreading, um, clump forming and triangular um, plant and it has variegated fronds and these fronds get up to 20 inches long. These fronds are very soft um, to a grayish green uh, with an overlay of uh, silver. And it also has maroon midribs. This is a very low maintenance fur um, or fern and it can get up to heights of one to one and a half feet with a spread of one and a half to two feet. Next we have Arenia saxatilis common name basket of gold and it's in the family of brassicaceae has a light preference of full sun it can tolerate partial shade and it has a soil preference of moist to well drained soils and it can also tolerate dry soils the flowers consist of a very showy bright yellow bloom and this blooms in spring from april to may and the flowers are arranged in panicles. The foliage consists of mostly basal leaves about five inches long, but they also have smaller um, linear uh, stem leaves as well, and these leaves are green uh, to a gray color. This is an herbaceous perennial. It has heights of a half a foot to one foot tall and a spread of one foot to one and a half feet. This is, um, can be used as a ground cover as well. Next we have Baptisia australis um, and the common name is false indigo or blue indigo. And it's in the family Fabiaceae. It has a light preference of full sun to partial sun and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. This plant features purple lupine-like flowers um, and erect uh, racemes, and these are up to 12 inches tall. And this blooms May to June. After June, the plant forms an inflated seed pod about two and a half inches long, and this turns to a charcoal black when ripe, um, and this has a lot of ornamental interest as well. The foliage resembles a clover, um, and this is in a mound as well. It has trifoliate bluish green leaves, and these leaflets are two inches long. The habit is an herbaceous perennial that grows three to four feet tall and spreads also three to four feet tall, and there's very little maintenance um, involved with this plant. Next, we have Begonia x tuber hybrida. This is in the family Boraginaceae. It has a light preference of partial shade to full shade, 
and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. The flowers are pistillate, um, so it does have the female parts, but it is lacking the male parts. The plant has a brightly colored waxy petaled flower, um, and these colors can range from white to yellow uh, to apricot to pink uh, to a uh, rose or red. Um, and this blooms from summer to fall. And here are the staminate flowers, um, and these have all of the male parts, but they are lacking the female parts. The leaves are pointed and they're about eight inches long. They have serrated edges and they have dark purple coloration and may also have a deep green coloration as well. This is an annual that has a height of one to one and a half feet and a spread of one and a half feet as well. Next, we have Begonia semperflorens cultorium, and that is in the family Orangenasi. It has a light preference of full sun, partial shade, and full shade, and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. The flowers consist of primarily with solid white shell pink, pink or red petals, um, and also bicolor surrounding a yellow center of the stamens or pistils. And these will flower from June through frost. The foliage consists of a very glossy, thick, succulent, um, and ovate leaf blade, which can either be glabrous or pubescent. Um, and these have very short petioles. The foliage has a coloration of green, chocolate, bronze, burgundy, and dark red. This is a medium-sized herbaceous annual, and it matures at six inches to 15 inches tall, and has a spread of six inches to 15 inches. Next, we have Virginia cordifolia, and this is in the family Saxifragaceae. It has a light preference of full sun to partial shade and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. The inflorescence consists of a dense compound cyme, and this consists of a pink to red coloration with about five petals, and this is round, um, and they overlap each other. The foliage is in a basal rosette, and this is very long stalked. The leaves are cordate, they're very thick, almost leathery, and they often seem very wrinkled. Uh, the margins are wavy and slightly crenate. Next, we have Brunaria macrophylla, common name Siberian bugless, and that's in the family Orangenasi. Has a light preference of partial shade to full shade and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. The flowers consist of five petaled um, blue petioles and they come out held above the foliage and they often have a yellow center. The first set of leaves that come out in the season tend to be very oblong but later the leaves become um, heart-shaped and they often curl. They are solid deep green or variegated with spotted um, and silvery white tones. This is a slow spreading clump forming perennial um, and it forms a very low mound uh, with heights coming from the flower stalks. I uh, expect it to reach a mature size of 12 to 20 inches in height and 12 to 24 inches in width. Next, we have Closia argentea and common name plumbed Closia. And this is in the family Amaranthaceae. This has a light preference of full sun and a soil preference of moist to well drained soils. The blooms range from orange, red, purple, yellow, yellow, and cream colored, and they are very narrow shaped, almost in a pure metal form. Um, and they're plume-like flower heads. They're about four to 10 inches long, and they're composed of very tiny, densely packed uh, colored flowers. The foliage consists of medium green leaves with entire margins, and they're, they, are, they have a glabrous leaf surface. 
And this is an herbaceous perennial that has heights of a half a foot to three feet and a spread of a half a foot to two feet. And the maintenance here is very low. Next, we have Colosia cristata and common name Coxcomb Colosia. And this is in the family Amaranth. Assy. It has a light preference of full sun and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. This consists of large crested flower heads about 3 to 12 inches across with each flower head um, resembling a comb of a rooster. The flower colors include uh, orange, red, purple, yellow, and pink and these bloom throughout summer and do fall. Uh, the stems have like a spear-shaped green to red-purple leaves. They're entire. Uh, this is an annual that has a height of about uh, one to three feet and a spread of about one and a half feet. Next we have Nasturtium officinale, common name watercress. It's in the family Brassicaceae. It has a light preference of full to partial shade and a soil preference of moist, well-drained soils to wet soils. The flower can consist of elongating racemes at the ends of uh, branching stems, and this flowers at a cluster at the tips of those stems. Uh, the flowers are about a quarter to a third of an inch um, uh, cross with four rounded white petals and six yellow stamens. The foliage is about two to four inches long um, and they're about an inch and a half wide in compounds gr groups of three to nine. The leaflets are very oval to lance shaped with irregular edging. The stems and leaves are hairless. And it's really interesting with the foliage because when this is in a, a waterlocked area or in a pond or anything like that, the stems actually float on the surface of water and then sprawl across mud and it roots freely at the nodes. It's, it's very fascinating. This watercrest, hence the name, consists of a lot of water. Uh, this is a perennial that has a four to 16 inches in, in height at maturity. Uh, this is invasive. It spreads very rapid, rapidly. It's crawling and creeping, um, and it's problematic, especially in streams, uh, springs, and brooks, um, and it could just take out an area and then choking all of the natives um, in its path. Now, in my case, I like harvesting it and eating it because it is edible. Um, so you could take the leaves off it and make it into a salad or put it into any of your dishes. It's excellent. But you do have to be careful um, because there are a lot of toxins within this because it's absorbing a lot of the pollutants. So I would be careful with that. Um, but if you're in a clean area, this should not be an issue. Next, we have Digitaria, um, common name crabgrass. And that's in the family Poesi. Has a light preference of full partial shade to full shade and a soil preference of dry, moist, well-drained soils and wet. Um, so pretty much it will grow anywhere. This is a summer annual. It grows about one uh, to three feet long at uh, the most of maturity and it develops several branching um, culms at the base. The lower branches of the culms tend to sprawl across the ground while the upper branches are more erect. Um, these are light green uh, and they are also glabrous although they are mostly covered by the sheaths in itself. Uh, the blades of this are alternate and they're about six inches long, about a half inch across. These are very dull, light green, and, and they are also entire. Now the sheaths are very light green and uh, finely ribbed. They're very shiny or, or dull um, and also hairy, but these are the sheaths. Now we have the fingers, which are on the left-hand side, and these range from two to 10 fingers, um, and they're like a finger-like raceme that are about eight inches long. Um, and then these racemes spread outward from one short stalk, and they are very narrow and straight. This is a huge problem, primarily in turf and residential or commercial turf areas. Um, and you are going to find crabgrass. Um, it is one of the first things to emerge. 
So it can be very challenging to um, manage this, but you can add a or apply a pre-emergent uh, just whenever this does germinate, it can kill off the seedlings before it turns into something as large as this. Next, we have Panicum brigatum, and this is switchgrass. It's also in the family Poaceae, or the grass family. Has a light preference of full sun to partial shade, and a soil preference of moist, well-drained soils to wet soils. This is a clump-forming, uh, warm season grass with very open, lacy sprays uh, with small seeds, as you can see in this photo, and hence the name switchgrass. It's very open, it kind of switches paces as, and it's also that opposite uh, leaf arrangement and it um, rotates around the stem. Now switchgrass is one of the most dominant species, um, especially of this tall grass, like a prairie grass as well. Um, but it's also gonna grow along the roadsides where there's a lot of moisture present. And this is a perennial that can reach heights of three to six feet. Next, we have Schizoscherium scoparium, and this is little blue stem. It's in the family Poaceae. It has a light preference of full sun and a soil preference of moist, well-drained soils. A little blue stem is native to prairies, fields, and clearings, uh, hills, roadsides, um, any of those areas. It typically matures to about two to four feet um, tall and features upright clumps of slender, very flat, linear green leaves that are about a quarter inch wide. Um, and then there's a little tint of blue at each leaf. They do have flowers um, and the flowers are followed by clusters of very fluffy silvery white seed heads as you can see in these photos, mostly to the right. You can see the very fuzzy appearance on the terminals. Um, this is the seed head. Um, and this is uh, the considered the most appealing part of the plant is that seed head as most ornamental grasses are. Next we have Rosmarinus officinalis, rosemary. And this is in the family Lamiaceae. Has a light preference of full sun and a soil preference of moist, well-drained soils. Rosemary has a very um, showy purple flower that blooms from June to July. And this flower is very tiny, two-lipped, um, and as you could see, whenever I say two-lipped, um, you can see the top of it, and then it has that lip coming out. The foliage is very fragrant, and this is evergreen. Um, it's almost needle-like gray-green leaves, um, and these are about one and a half inches long. This is considered an herbaceous perennial and it has heights of uh, two to six feet at maturity and a spread of two to four feet. And the maintenance is medium. Next, we have Thymus vulgaris, common name thyme. And this is in the family of Lamiaceae. It has a light preference of full sun and a soil prefer preference of moist to well-drained soils. Thyme has a purple flower um, and it blooms from June to July. This is very showy and this is also has whorls of tiny tubular, almost lilac-like flowers that appears on the ends um, of the stems. And this appears in late spring to early summer. And these flowers are extremely attractive to bees. The foliage consists of very tiny uh, linear to elliptic uh, pointed gray green leaves. And the leaf margins actually roll under. And these leaves are very aromatic. This is an herbaceous perennial that grows a half foot to one foot at maturity and a spread of a half foot to one foot. The maintenance here is very low as well. Next we have Euphorbia, common name spurge, and it's in the family Euphorbiaceae. Has a light preference of full sun to partial shade and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. The flowers are yellow to green in color and appear as umbels on the terminals. The foliage has very milky latex sap in the stems and leaves, and it has an alternate to um, narrow leaves that are about one to four inches long. This is a perennial, 
Um, this is very invasive as well, especially milky spurge. Um, and then we also have heights that it may reach uh, one to three feet. But this is mostly spreading. So when I say one to three feet, that's spreading um, laterally. Our last one, we have glaucoma heterosi, and this is ground ivy or creeping charlie. This is also very invasive. It's in the family Lamaceae. It has a light preference of full to partial shade and a soil preference of moist to well-drained soils. The flower is blue to purple uh, with reddish speckles on it as well. And the foliage is serrated and tooth-leafed margins with heart uh, and kidney-shaped leaflets uh, that are almost shaped in a palmate formation um, and a palmate leaf venation as well.